We did it here just because that was my home and the piano sounded good. And it's not really summertime outside, so there's no point in doing it outside. I used to listen to jazz with my best friend's dad drinking wine late at night. So that's kind of how I first listened to jazz. So we'd stay up till like really late and he'd always stay up at night. So I'd just hang out with him and listen to jazz. I just remember my father really loving this song. So it's a song that I learned early on. And also the, this is Ella version with Louis Armstrong. That's like for me, one of the best recordings of all time. So I guess for me, it's just kind of just a special song like that. I used to sing a lot when I was a kid. And I just thought about like what, uh, which way is the best way to do it where I can tell the story in, uh, in a way where I feel the most natural telling the story. So I just sing it and then whatever feels good we do it that way. You know? Then the string arrangements, Mel brought a surprise string arrangement in so that was fun. The original arrangement was so gorgeous so it wasn't about trying to change that, it was just about just kind of doing our own fun version so that's about it. in college. I went to Paris for like two weeks. I actually ran out of money, like my bank account overdrafted, so I had negative money. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I have a ticket home, but I don't have money for transportation or food. 
I just practiced a few songs and I went down to the metro station and I just played my guitar and I would play for like two hours every day. It was like, oh my gosh, I have to like sing and like people have to see me, but I needed that push because it was like, you either do this or like you starve. The fascinating thing that you learn is that like, nobody cares, but I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that we're always thinking about what people will think of us, but it's like, nobody cares. Like you go play on the subway and people will look at you and then they'll walk past you and then they'll think about their wives and they'll think about what they're gonna have for dinner and they'll think about what they're doing at work the next day. Like life goes on, like you're not gonna die if you like go sing outside or something. And so I think there's kind of a, a beauty in that and realizing that you're just, you know, a part of a larger thing that carries on. Does that make sense?
definitely wanted to do a Co-Train cover. It follows this kind of storytelling, which is very abstract, and you think back about travels and journeys. And I'm leaving Portugal, so this is like a really good opportunity to get together with my friends. When I talked to David and Gabriel, the first reaction we had was like, yeah, we're gonna tear it all apart. And also, I'm not good enough, I'm not qualified enough to actually cover it traditionally. <laughs> I can't actually play like that. So it's more like a spiritual cover of the song. This is not a squat, it's, it belongs to artists. It's from back that went bankrupt. We've been working here mostly recording. This is a kind of a very special place to play music because it meshes the scene, but at the same time you have the perception of the details. When you play here, you are a bit directed by the space. Coltrane, I mean, I heard it when I was a child, just but never really paid attention. But the older I got, the more closer I felt to what he was trying to do. There are things that you can't say with words, but you can say it with your music.